Hello, my name's Sarah Gavron and I'm the director of the film Suffragette. I'm Alice Norrington, I'm the production designer. And I'm Simon Hughes, I'm the visual effects supervisor. This was an opening sequence in the film and we wanted to create scale and see London in 1912, which obviously is a challenge because it doesn't exist anymore. And so we debated endlessly about where to shoot this and whether we should go to a, a street in Birmingham or, or a sort of more shootable street. But in the end, we ended up in Cornhill and created this. And then we had this challenge that we signed of how to extend the street. Yeah, it was all about what is at the end of the road, really was one of the big questions, wasn't it? The art department dressed the majority of this location up until the statue. And then everything else afterwards was augmented by the visual effects teams. As the scene continues, Maud gets caught up in the smashing of the windows. So we could not smash windows in this location. The visual effects team did things like uh, removing uh, bouncing rubber rocks and adding additional smash glass. wanted to really create a sense of London and a distinct London from East London so that you saw the various types of architecture that you get across London. We did a big walk around of you know, all, all the areas that still exist and uh, just gathered a library of various different kinds of images, uh, different buildings from shop fronts to residential uh, to laundry lines and all those kind of things. Just yeah, so then you created that depth, which I thought really worked well, so it felt like we were looking into a whole world beyond this street. Yes. Yes, this was exciting because we were the first film crew ever to be given access to shoot in the Houses of Parliament. So we knew that that was going to be a gift, but we also had challenges because we were never going to be able to afford enough supporting artists to fill the whole courtyard and we were staging a complex scene. We needed to create a single scene where we see as many suffragettes as possible. So what we needed to do is something that's called a tile shoot, where we basically shoot groups of suffragettes in different sections where we've seen them all together. For Holloway Prison Yard we had to add in uh, buildings in the background and remove uh, some unwanted architecture. And for the front section we had to completely rebuild everything behind the wall, which is actually shot at Lincoln's Inn Field. This was based on another true event where Emmeline Pankhurst, the leader of the movement, she appeared in Camden Square in London. And one of the challenges was, again, to create the crowd. There were about 50 suffragettes in costume actually watching this. Uh, we were called on to make that feel much larger than it actually was. So another thing that the suffragettes did was arson attacks. And they once attacked Lloyd George's summer residence. And we have that sequence in the film. We had some SFX people who set off an explosion, but we had to augment it mm -hmm. to make it look big enough. Yeah, I mean, the explosion itself from SFX was, was pretty spectacular, but I think our role was just in expanding on that. This is the sequence that everybody knows about, when Emily Wilde and Davidson went to the derby and ran in front of the King's horse. I mean, the approach here is tiling shooting again for everything in the foreground, and then the line of vehicles and the, and the white fence, so that was all computer generated. You don't question any of it. That's why it's so good, because it just yeah, seamlessly runs together. Like here, it, this, this literally was just a bit of grass. Yeah, this really was probably the biggest moment for the visual effects team in the whole film. Then there was the King's Stand, and you created a top layer to make it have more scale and feel more important and then those drapes were all created by you again weren't mm -hmm. they? Again it was about creating a sense of it being busy mm -hmm. and these people being the upper class people and having a different feel from the rest. And because that sequence it, that when it happened in 1913 was so well documented and it's quite well known footage that you can watch on YouTube, I was very keen that we created it very accurately or as accurately as we could and it was about keeping it feeling very real all the time, which, you know, you were so good from the get-go 
about saying, do what you need to do and we'll make it work. 